we're here. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Understanding Practical Chess Streams with, guess who? Me, Talia. All right, so um, this is my first time with the online class. Never had that before. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so today I wanted to talk about a game from my most recent tournament, Art of Flood Open in Moscow. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I always enjoy going to Moscow for chess related reasons. And uh, um, in this game, I was uh, kind of looking forward for a win. I was really trying hard for a win uh, because I had a very good start of the tournament. I uh, had, I think, two and a half out of three on the top section. It was very, very strong. Uh, start of the tournament, but then I had I think uh, like three and three three out of three out of uh, seven, which is not great, um, and I kind of wanted to pick myself back up, and it happened after this game. Uh, I won a very nice game against uh, Alexandra Maltsevskaya. She's one of the best female junior players in Russia right now. Uh, I've seen her a bunch of times before, but uh, we actually played one time before in World Youth in 2018. So it was uh, very nice to get to play her again. It was a draw of the game, so I was looking forward um, to a win here despite being black pieces. Um, all right, so let's get on with the game. I think it involves a lot of um, tactical decisions uh, principles and good defense. So let's get to it. D4, D5. C4, D takes C4. The um, Queen's Gambit accepted. Very popular nowadays. Very solid opening. Uh, Caruana, Fabiana Caruana plays a little bit. Hare Krishna, all the top guys, you know, are playing this opening nowadays. In the in the game, uh, we had knight f3, which is the main line, but also, just so you know, f4, uh, e4 is another continuation, a little bit more aggressive. So, uh, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6. I played, uh, I played this way, actually, because I was looking forward to bishop c4, c5, castle, knight c6. Usually, sometime before knight c6, Knight uh, c6, uh, a6 is the uh, more popular move. And uh, since that's going to be the move order, what you can do actually is you can, after uh, e3, play a6. Sometimes opponents are too scared, you know, to like uh, allow bishop f4, bishop c4, b5. Um, so they can play a4, but this is actually just a waste of tempo. It's not necessary. You can play like bishop g4 if you want, and this is fine. So it's like a little trick, maybe. It has worked for me a few times. But I played with e6, bishop uh, c4, c5, castle, knight c6. This is a new idea that I wanted to try out. Um, I saw the game uh, Lissy versus Jeffrey Shion from the World Cup 2019, a couple of months ago, where Jeffrey Shion won. And the game is very nicely analyzed um, in uh, um, American Chess Magazine. So you can check that out if you want. You can look it up online. Black won a very nice game. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to, to try that out. And uh, here we are. So knight c3, a6 now. We have kind of transposed to the main variation. And here my opponent plays a3. a3, I, I will admit, it's not a move that I knew at the time. Uh, by the way, the uh, Lissi Xion game continued with CD, Queen D1, Rook D1, Bishop C5. Um, so that's completely different. That's getting into an endgame. Uh, but um, besides that, also move to consider is maybe Bishop E2. Just going back with the Bishop so E5 doesn't come with the tempo. And for example, if CD4, knight d4, bishop d7, knight b3, completely normal. 
recent game from LME versus uh, Van Forest from Reykjavik. So A3. A3 is not actually a bad move at all. Uh, the idea of it is that if at some point black plays c takes d4 after e takes d4 we have got an isolated pawn position and the pawn is already on a3 so the bishop can come back to a2 whenever it needs to and have ideas like queen d3 queen queen b1 so for example i'll show here castle and maybe not now maybe like bishop g5 first uh, or some other moves, but um, this is could be a, this is an idea, and also the pawn on a3 uh, prevents black from going knight b4, knight d5, which is a common maneuver to play against the isolated pawn. First you block it, then you attack it, then you take it, or in a more complicated way, which tends to happen a lot. First you block it then you attack it, then you create a second witness and you attack that second witness instead of taking the isolated pawn in the first place so you distract all of the pieces from your opponent and then you come back to the pawn <laughs> can be very tricky if it wants to be so anyway, a3 played b5, this is the most logical continuation um, here Obviously, there are options. So, for example, in the game, my opponent went bishop a2, but also bishop d3 may have been a possibility. Obviously, something like this is not possible. Uh, something like this is not possible. I think we actually uh, have some people in the chat. I don't know if any of them want to get, want to guess why why this move is not good. I'll give you maybe a few moments. Although it's not very hard. Alright then, so, anyways, uh, yeah, bishop b5, bishop b5 at the end wins, yeah, knight, knight takes e4, uh, queen takes e4, bishop b5, that's why sometimes a bishop on d3 is not really um, anything threatening, because simply, it's not like black can take the pawn, so, yeah. We can continue with bishop e7, bishop g5, and this is just a, a standard isolated pawn game, which is something I was kind of trying to avoid with my with my position. I thought that I could maybe try and get something better than that, um, and usually I am on the side of the isolated pawn, not against it, so I'm not as comfortable playing uh, those positions. And I also don't want to take on d4 if I don't have to because I don't want to open the the wait for the c1 bishop since it's the stock already over there I don't really want to to you know let the bishop come out and be beautiful so after bishop a2 bishop b7 uh, queen e2 queen c7 this all makes a lot of sense so far and here, for example, the better continuation would have been just rook d1 directly, to which the best reply is rook d8. And here, there are actually, in this type of position, there are actually some ideas of d5. Um, you'll get that from the game later. Um, but uh, don't, if you're playing on the black side of this, don't be worried because it's not a huge deal. I know sometimes when um, your king is in the center and there is a pawn break, you know, it can be completely devastating, but in this scenario it's completely fine because the pawn is on e3. There is no open file here, right? It's not like the queen can just attack uh, the king on e8. So you can just take, take, play bishop e, uh, e7, and castle next move. 
don't really have to worry about this because there are some tricks tricks are for kids um yeah and of course the idea of it in for example in this game they play takes takes but the idea of it is that for example if queen takes b7 actually i'm gonna let you guess first so queen takes b7 what could possibly happen i think there are oh, one move is better than the other one there's one very good continuation. And some this is something also to keep in mind um, during the queen's, queen gambit accepted uh, variation. Sometimes, you know, maybe like a supposedly hanging pawn on the queen side means that you might get in trouble in the center. So try to guess now how can black win the game in this short line. Queen takes in 92, um, maybe, uh, I think it is possible, but the only, my only worry is that after queen takes, takes 97, there is king f1, and after uh, rook takes, king takes e2, and you get only two pieces for, for the rook. And remember, you're still pawn down, right? Yes. So, maybe try to change, um, Try to, I would say change the move orders, but 92 is not really the move. But you know, keep keep thinking about it. Um, yeah, knight f3 better. Yeah, knight, knight, in, knight f3. Knight f3 is more solid. Well, it's just winning. Uh, because you're forced to do something about the king, right? If bishop takes, just rook takes d1. Or queen b7, both of them are completely playable and if pawn takes you work through the pins and now after bishop takes rook takes e1 and you're just winning by force so this is a little um, example of how lines can get very complicated in this type of position and not always you know a pawn is for free so that's important to know anyway so in the, in the position my opponent played bishop d2 actually, which is a much more passive move. I had a similar position that I was looking at to add it, add it today. Um, and it's from a couple of months ago in the uh, I Am Invitational here in St. Louis in November. And something similar happened. I felt like, like my opponent didn't actually know what to do with their pieces. Um, and they just made moves like uh, bishop d2, uh, rook d1, rook c1, uh, which is actually fine in this scenario, but in the, the position that we had at the time, it wasn't. Um, however, I can feel that, you know, bishop d2 is not really a move that you want to make. You you kind of want to make, especially a swipe, you know, more, more aggressive type of move. So rook d1 would have been um, better. Although bishop d2 is nothing out of the ordinary, you know. The, the the position is still about equal, uh, so it's fine. It's not like it's a bad move that gives advantage to black right now. Anyway, so rook d8, best continuation. Uh, you could argue for bishop uh, e7, but what I didn't like, what I was thinking in my position, was that I'm moving the bishop, and after it takes, I have to move it again. So it's kind of like a waste of move. And after that, rook fc1. And the rook is attacking both my bishop and the queen at the end of the of the file. So imagine doing this and then going back to e7. I move my bishop three times. So it's not it's not ideal. Thought rook d8 was better. Just bringing my rook into into the position and um, putting pressure on uh, d4. Now let's say if pawn takes. Uh, if pawn takes, it's not actually an issue anymore because I can just take with my bishop. I only wasted one move in doing so. And if I need to, I'll, play my, I'll place my bishop back on e7 or even uh, d6. Put my bishop back on d6, get my queen to b1 out of any problems, and have 
uh, both pieces, you know, attacking the the king side. Very active. So rook a c1 makes a lot of sense. Uh, once again, uh, playing on the x-ray that we have on the c file. And the best move in the position uh, was maybe just simply taking on d4, actually. Takes. And uh, playing bishop e7, rook fd1, castle. Um, this is, uh, once again, an isolated pawn position. Although the pawn on d4 is being attacked quite a, quite a bit now. Uh, by the way, not, not knight takes d4. Maybe you already, you know, figured out why. But uh, knight takes d4, let's suppose, rook takes d4. And... Obviously, there will be some knight takes b5, right? Uh, yeah, so let's see. Queen b6 is a move that I played in the game. And I kind of want to take a second here to let you guys think, the ones that are watching and come up with a move for white uh, because despite this being a, a game you know seen from the black side white had a very strong move here and one that i didn't consider quite enough and that i should have and it makes a whole lot of sense because i haven't finished my development uh, my development my king is not castled i just moved my queen again which was not a move i wanted to do uh in the game but i thought that you know I'm moving my queen, and the next move I get my bishop out and castle. It'll be fine. Uh, so I want to, to you know, let you think for a moment and uh, come up with uh, with the best move for for uh, the best move for white. Think about how you can um, create initiative in the position. Play on the weaknesses that uh, black has. And I'll give you a hint for now, for now, only for now, the bishop on a2 is very strong. Yeah, d5. d5 is a very, very, very strong move. More than you might think. Oh, just touch something. Uh, so, d5. Now, what to what to take back with? There is only one good continuation out of the many possible captures, and by many possible, I mean. Uh, knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes, not really. Um, and obviously the other option is moving the knight, but that's just silly because you pawn takes on e6. So um, what to do as black? D takes e5 would have been okay, but uh, d5 is more active, and if d takes e5, just bishop takes e5, and that's kind of what I want. That's the reason why I haven't been moving my bishop. So yeah, um, think of a f uh, of the follow-up. Uh, I'll just let you know to be very careful. Uh, so for example, if uh, d uh, e takes d5, you have to consider e4, and if knight takes on d5, you have to consider both knight d5 and bishop d5. Ah, knight takes e5, I guess, so nothing opens up. That's what I was thinking in the game, and that's why I played knight takes e5. However, the best move is taken with the pawn. Best move is taken with the pawn. And after e4, the most challenging move... Uh, from white, uh, not d5. This d5, uh, sorry, d4, 
is losing due to e5. And this knight has no squares to go to. If pawn takes, takes. And the king is in a lot of trouble. So, uh, the best move is d takes e4. Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop e7. And the next move is castle. Castle as quick as possible and things will start getting back into place. Knight g5 is not great. First of all, you can take on, on d2, but maybe even better. c4, blocking the bishop. And um, no more chances of um, plays against f7. Definitely not castle because of queen takes h7. So, yeah, this would have been about equal. So after rook uh, c e1, castle, knight g5, takes, takes, rook c8. And uh, uh, it might look a little bit uncomfortable for black because they have a, um, they have the, kind of like the king side a little bit uh, lonely. But uh, we have a pawn more and also uh, right now, ideas of discovery are happening, like knight d4, and maybe bring the queen to the king side, and yeah. So, instead of that, instead of that, uh, I played knight takes d5. Now, knight takes d5 is a mistake. It's a mistake, and I didn't actually realize it during the game, of course, otherwise I wouldn't have played knight takes d5. But try to figure out what to capture with. Knight takes e5 or bishop takes e5. I'll give you a few moments. This is really messy and uh, it's really tough to, to, you know, uh, keep calm while playing black in this position. What kept me calm was that my opponent was spending a lot of time and for some reason I had this feeling that it wasn't really gonna work out. Uh, I didn't actually play it right, but uh, my feeling was kind of right. Okay, so we're getting a few suggestions here. And both of them are knight takes c5. I'll allow, you know, I'll finish my 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 um, explanation and then I'll go back into the line. So be quick to, to leave your comments if you are thinking uh, about it. You think so too. All right, um, I'll finish my comments and then uh, we'll move on to the game. I don't want to keep you waiting for too long. Um, oh, we have finally uh, one comment with uh, uh, bishop takes d5. Cool. Stanislav Karpov. Trying to learn Russian. Anyway, so, um, right, so I was saying, I, during this tournament, what I could tell that, um, was, you know, how I could tell that I was in good form, because in general I was in good form, B2 GMs, 100 rating points, um, what I could feel was that I was playing based on instinct and I had a good feeling about my moves and I played with uh, confidence and the, the, I, for some reason I wasn't too worried here and I lost a little bit of that confidence uh, hello, uh, while um, playing in the middle rounds of the tournament but during this game I could kind of feel um, what was happening. So, final reveal. The correct continuation is actually bishop takes e5. Bishop takes e5. The reason why it's so good is that, is, is that after takes e4, now there'll be a great outpost for the knight on d5. For example, d4, probably the most logical move. Knight d5, queen a7, knight c7, provoking the king to move, and then just simply knight back and white has a clear advantage. Uh, another move, knight e7, just takes everything. Rook c3, with the idea of rook e3. And uh, once again, clear advantage. 
And the last move, T takes C4. Now, this is what I missed. I only considered Queen takes E4, and I thought Knight E7, I'm fine. However, uh, White has Knight takes E4. And this is very uncomfortable because after Bishop E7, Knight takes E5. And after a castle, there are some ideas of Knight B7, Queen B7, Rook C6 takes, Queen takes E7. And it leads to a better play for White. So, yeah, that uh, good job to those who um, recommended uh, Bishop takes E5. Okay. So, let's get back here. Now, knight takes e5 is what happened in the game. And after takes e4, uh, the move that I saw a lot of people were recommending in the chat, uh, the best continuation is d4. Uh, you don't really want to do something like takes. This is kind of like uh, suicide almost because you're opening up the way for the bishop um, and a lot, lots of ideas are happening right now. For example, queen takes knight e7. Now they can play for f7. Um, maybe something like queen queen to f4 could be putting pressure on the pawn. The the problem is that. Uh, this queen, if it comes to f3, uh, to f6, it loses control of c5. So it's kind of like everything is a is a mess here. Anyways, just in general. Also, there's bishop g5. Um, in general, don't <laughs> don't try don't open up the position when your king is in the center. So best move is d4. Now uh, black actually has a better position. Um, black has a better position and let me show you why so uh, really quickly if bishop uh, d5 uh, bishop b7 knight g5 castle queen h5 there's no issue because we can just take take and play c4 and this is completely fine and now the key move knight g5 Knight g5. Now, um, there are two obvious ways um, white can, uh, black can protect f7, which is the main threat. I'll make arrows for it. f7 is the main threat. There are two ways um, white can, uh, black can defend from those. Uh, one is better than the other one. Not really. Huge difference, both are winning for, uh, not winning, but maybe clearly better for black. And I'll show you. So let's start with the variation, which is c4. c4 is actually maybe a little bit better than um, the other move. But what, it, what I didn't like from it was knight takes f7. Now, knight takes f7, there is only one good continuation. So I'll, I'll let the chat, uh, actually, never mind. Knight takes f7, king takes f7. How should white continue if king takes f7? What, what could be the, the best move for, for white? Also, you know, when you're, you know, before c4, you have to see this line, and you have to analyze, and, and uh, you know, it's not easy, you know, seeing all of these lines, but if you're actually just in front of the board, and you're looking at all of these long calculations that are actually accurate, and um, you're seeing, you know, all of the threats your opponent has, and you're like, wow, I'm actually, you start feeling like so, you know, so powerful too, like, uh, you're actually in good form to, to calculate, and um, set up traps for your opponent and realizing the, the traps that your opponent is setting up for you. So, 
After king takes f7, there is one very strong move from, from white. Anybody has any ideas? Obviously, you have to be very active because you already gave up a knight. So. Ooh. Oh, lots of comments are getting in. Right. So, um, for in this position, rook takes a4. It's very dangerous. White is actually winning in this line. The idea is that if pawn takes, queen takes, um, let's say king e7, queen e6. King e8, queen f7. And king e6, once again, queen f7. And this is not pleasant. What, black would have to play rook d5, but you know, this is just silly. There's no need to get into this. However, However, after knight f7, the strong move is d5, d3. Uh, in the an intermediate move. Now, after queen f3, let's say, knight d4, queen h5, g6, queen e5 takes, rook takes e4, doesn't actually work now. First of all, I'll comment this. Uh, there is bishop g7 in this idea. But rook takes e4 doesn't actually work because takes, takes, knight e6, queen takes, queen c6. And uh, black is a piece more and they have clear advantage. You can see how complicated this game was. I have never uh, been able to see this variation. Um, so I play knight e5. Knight e5 and knight e5 is supported by some, tri some tricks. Yeah, you would actually want to sack the rook because I feel like the bishop is mo more valuable um, on the a2, f7, uh, a2, g8 diagonal. And if you're going to sacrifice something, you know, sacrifice the rook, um, might as well. Since, you know, it's what's going to help keep the, the initiative. So, here. My opponent played f4. I was considering bishop f4 but thought that um, queen f6 was just um, fine for me because I'm attacking the bishop. The bishop has to keep defending the knight on g5, so let's say it takes. I can take here, and I'm fine. My next move, um, my, my next few moves are bishop e7 castle, finally. <laughs> so um, yeah, bishop f4 is not a big problem. The key move is f4. Now, what to do against f4? There is only one move. This game was uh, tough. Really tough. And we were spending a lot of time. I can't, take you, I can't tell you exactly, you know, uh, how much time we were spending. Uh, but maybe by this point, we both had half an hour. And what I was trying to do is since I knew my position was less complicated than my opponent's. I didn't know if I was completely winning or not. I didn't see a good move for white. By the way, think about the position while I'm talking. There's only one good move here for white. Uh, for black, sorry. Um, so, what was I saying? Right, so what I was trying to do is since we both had about half an hour and it was her turn to make a, a move after, after the one I did now, uh, I was trying to make tough decisions to make her get quicker into time pressure. So about at, a, at the half an hour mark, I would start playing a more practical chess and um, kind of let my opponent, you know, think forever. Never play f6, that's true. f6 here, it's a big no-no. Um, opening up the diagonal for the bishop even more, that's just... Uh, uh, disaster. Maybe d3. A lot of people are recommending d3. Let's see. d3. d3, how about... Um, d3, how about... I 
I guess Queen H5 maybe is a possibility, but G6 I don't like so much. Although, I guess maybe Queen H3 is a possibility. I was thinking more of uh, Queen of 2 actually. What are, how are you gonna defend this pawn now? Maybe, maybe this, but minimum I think I can suck the exchange. This is this doesn't look good for. This doesn't look good for. For um, black. How about you? You change the move orders. How about you change the move orders instead of d three? Do the other move. I'm guessing you're realizing now what I mean. Let's go back to the, to the position so you can see clearly. Here. You're mentioning d3, now change the move orders. Nobody has a clue. Remember, you do the second move first, and then the first move second. There's nothing to worry about. It's an explosive move, as some would say. Right, C4. Wait, no, not knight c4, c4 actually. I think the idea of d3 knight g4 is a little bit uh, slow. Yeah, c4, see, everybody's uh, now realizing. Cool. Yeah, c4. c4 is the only move. And it's a decisive move that gives black the complete advantage. Um, you had to see c4 before playing knight e5. So, yeah. c4. Of course, if um, f takes d3, queen f2, bishop c5. And if... Um, what else can they do? Bishop b3 takes, takes, takes with check. And after rook takes, we can play rook d7, and this bishop on on a2 that used to be so good it's now very bad we are an exchange up the pawn on f7 is protected next move is h6 the double pawns on the center are not good and the position is winning okay so we know that f takes c5 is not possible therefore white needs to do something else but they're kind of running out of things to do so um by the way, I calculated this line during the game. I think it was bishop a5. I think I calculated bishop a5 during the game, but just thought queen a7. Bishop takes d3. Once again. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to allow um, queen a5. I think I don't want to allow this to happen. So, my opponent played queen h5, uh, but after queen h5, um, okay, I have a question that if, okay, I have a question that if, um, here, I think, they said bishop d3, but I think you mean bishop b3, and after bishop b3 I can just take and, the queen still, is still pinned, you don't have time to do this. See where it goes, it's pinned. So, um, yeah. I think that's what you mean. Yeah, it still loses the queen, unfortunately. So it's a very beautiful calculation. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so they played queen h5. She played queen h5. And I play queen h6. I think queen h6 is better than queen g6. Simply because after queen h6, you can't take because I take with 
I took it here right away. Um, yeah. So, also, you know, in general, I have two pawns, two central pawns. The bishop on uh, a2 is kind of bad. Um, so, getting into something like this is not really a big deal for me because now we have what? Four and two, six, four, uh, same amount of pawns. But the pawns on the e file are gonna fall, and the bishop on a2 is bad, and I have one pass d pawn. I was um, completely fine with getting into this endgame. So, um, queen d1. But now the position is just simply winning. Simply winning after bishop b7. Uh, bishop b7 obviously can't take on e5. Uh, can't take on e5 because bishop g5 is coming and there is no follow up. I'm gonna cast on next move. So that's very, uh, very strong. Um, like, I'll show you. Takes and castles, and it's completely fine. Finally, castling a move 22. Uh, yeah. So, my opponent, instead of doing that, made a, I think what was a worse move, knight h3, but she, she uh, kept the spirit of trying to fight for something, even if, you know, this is objectively a worse option than trading pieces. She's still trying to keep pieces on the board to have some sort of, you know, trick in the future. I think about here, maybe she had seven minutes. I had a little bit more, like 20 something. And we do, in this tournament, it was one round per day, so we d did get um, an extra uh, 30 minutes after move 40, but we're on move 20, so there's no way, like, she'll have to play, you know, um, really fast chess to, to get to there. And she didn't actually make it to move 40 in this game. So, after knight h3, knight d3, very obvious move, rook c2. And actually, I felt like I was I, I, I could castle here for sure, but I felt like I was good uh, good to play bishop takes e4. Uh, why? Because uh, after my um, uh, I can play f5 if I choose to. Was your opponent worse than you? Actually, no. She was higher rated than me. She was like maybe um, she was about the rating that I have now. She was. Uh, she was, I think, 23.14, about there. And my rating right now is 23.11. The thing is that I went from <laughs> 21.99 to 23.11 in one tournament. Just because I had very, very strong results. So, yeah, so it was a big jump. Although our ratings were very different, um, I did feel like... I was strong enough to beat my opponents even with the black pieces. Simply because I've played here before and I felt, I don't know, I had I had this feeling. <laughs> I actually did castle in the game, don't worry, I actually castled. Well, we'll get to there. This is supposed to be practical chess and I'm teaching I'm teaching you not to castle. What am I <laughs> What am I doing? Um anyways, so let's get on with the with the game. Like I was saying, I felt like I was good to take on e4 because I have f5 next in the worst case scenario. So, bishop a5, rook d7, b3, trying to open things up. And just one final thing that I want to that I want to address: uh, don't uh, don't try to don't don't play really fast, even when you are winning. When you see that you have a winning position. Um, I'm not telling you to spend all of your time because that's also very bad, but um, try to find the continuation that gives less um, that gives less, you know, chances for your opponent. So, okay, knight c5. My idea was, you know, the discovery of the bishop. And my opponent played b takes c4, which was a huge su surprise to me. I thought she was going to play rook d2, but after rook d2, there is c3, rook takes c4, c2. 
attacking the queen so you don't have time to take on d7 queen d2 rook takes d4 queen takes d4 and finally the move that you have all been waiting for castle so yeah that was the variation i was calculating um and this is completely winning for for black like um i have a pawn on the uh, seventh rank um this is just uh, a strong pair of bishops this is just crashing cool so instead she played b takes c4 bishop takes c2 queen takes c2 finally finally the big move castle uh castling on move 25 i don't know how to feel about it um don't know how to feel about it anyways so uh, <laughs> yeah um, I don't know what I can say about living on the edge but in this game I did live on the edge also you know I was I was you know kind of going downhill a little bit in the tournament so uh, I really want needed something to pick myself back up and I thought why not play a, a super aggressive beautiful game Actually, that, that was none of my intent. Uh, I was planning on playing a very solid game and see what I can get with the black pieces against her. But I also had a lot of confidence, so I was getting into all of these lines, you know, without um, without doubting myself much. So, uh, B t uh, C takes B5. We'll see how the game finishes. Uh, A, B5. Uh, Bishop, B4. D3. Queen d1, queen f6. Queen b6 was also a possibility. Here. Okay, so queen f6, knight g5, queen d4 was another move doing this. I was considering, but I didn't find it necessary. I just played h6. No, knight uh, to f3, knight e4. Uh, with some really big threats. Can, any, can anybody tell me what's the biggest threat uh, Black has in this position? Maybe some, some you know, weak dark squares? Actually, this position is just like completely winning, so I can do anything I want, almost, and get away with it. But, you know, always making threats. So... The dark squares are very weak here in one specific diagonal. Um, I'm guessing uh, you mean queen b6. Yeah, queen b6. Queen b6 is the big threat here. Cool. So my opponent played g3. Bishop takes b4, a b4, d2, queen c2, rook f d8. Also, d1 was winning, I think. I don't remember exactly how the line went, but I think it's something like this. Maybe. Queen takes queen of two. Anyways, I played rook fd8. Queen takes e4. d1 simply. And unfortunately, my opponent thought they... I, I, I'm guessing they were trying to fight for, you know, the best continuation. And maybe, you know, whatever gave them the biggest chance. But they played bishop b1, which, you know, it's um, not the usual reply to a queen promotion. Um, but, you know, maybe she was trying to make it to move 40. And um, although, I mean, this is just very... Um, this is just very, very, very lost. I think computer might be giving mate by this point. Yeah. Anyways, so bishop b1, queen b6, king g2, and finally just rook d2. After rook d2, knight takes. I can take with rook. Queen here, queen h5. Should be checkmate. And not given a, a single chance even for a queen h7 check. It's 
so yeah that's how the game finished um i uh, actually i'll put the final position uh final position was this one um yeah so this is how the game finished i was actually um extremely pleased with my result game didn't even last that long maybe like two three hours so i felt very good you know beating my opponent in such a short amount of time for a uh, one round a day tournament um these tournaments are long even if you don't realize it you know like uh, usually it started at 3 p.m one time i had a round that lasted up until eight so um maybe even later um i've had nine and a half hour uh, games uh, 125 moves uh, these tournaments are long so winning in like two three hours is actually pretty good in general um especially with the 30 minutes at the end so this felt very nice i felt like i was getting myself back up and um this was round eight actually so i won round eight had four out of eight and i went on to uh the last round against the field master actually we still have some extra time so i can set up a position from that game um or like show the the final part of it um anyway so um cool to have a such a sharp game ending fast well generally end game uh, games that are sharp end up faster uh and you know um it's it's you already know this but it's very double-edged so like um not only can you lose uh, not only can you win very fast you can also lose very fast and um despite the game being really fast your calculation has to be very precise um to allow yourself to actually find the correct moves because there were a few times in this position in this game where i had to find um the only move like for example c4 was a very nice move um c4 was a very nice move uh queen h6 was another very nice move earlier i had to find e takes c5 instead of knight takes c5 that was an only move too so um yeah it's important to to always you know uh, try to be as sharp as possible and yeah all right so since we have a few more minutes um maybe i'll set up maybe i'll set up a position from the game really quickly since it's uh from the last round so i can explain you know like transition from round eight to round nine in round nine i was playing a fide master that i have seen on many tournaments in russia before but never actually played very strong player of course 2300 i think he was um we the game was a sandwich variation and uh, we i actually felt like i had a good position for the whole game but you know time pressure does its things and he actually had a lot of um a lot of counterplay um right so this is the position uh i'll flip the board and as you can probably guess um why it is an exchange down why it is an exchange down actually i think i need to make this so it's oops i need to make this so that it's um black to move now here uh we both had like about a minute my opponent who could have played bishop f5 which is a move that i missed um move that i missed actually actually i set up from here this was the position so my best move was queen c1 and here maybe i am winning uh however i made a mistake i played queen h4 on time pressure and missed that after bishop f5 can't take because of this roof after rook d8 they have king king f8 and i have no way to get out of this annoying pin i thought that rook d8 worked because after takes takes queen f8 um 
I can uh, take and take here. And that's what I had in mind. Minimum. Didn't really um, realize Bishop takes a five until the game was in front of me. So, but anyways, my opponent made a big mistake. They played rook takes e2. Now, would any of you out there like to guess how to continue as white? And the move I made, I didn't know if it was the best or not, but I knew it was very tricky. I, I thought maybe I was missing something, so I didn't have much time to think. Um, but uh, the move I did just now, it was very tricky and uh, realized that it would be tough to make a move for my opponent. I ended up winning this game, uh, won 112 rating points and uh, and I think I got uh, I got the best female prize, although there were females ahead of me, but I got placed 36 and they gave prizes to 1 to 35. So technically I got best female prize because I got 36 and I was like literally the only the next person right out of the top 35. And by the way, uh, I got 36th place, but on the ranking I was 92, so that's very, that's very nice. So we have rook d3, f6, uh, we have two votes for each. <laughs> Is somebody come, uh, gonna come and, and um, break the tie? One is better than the other, I'll say that. <laughs> so they're saying f6. Queen g6, rook d3. Let's see. Oh, I touched something. Um, f6. f6. What if... Um, what if queen h7? Queen g5, queen here. I think the only issue with, queen, with f6 is that it gives me a free tempo. As black. Maybe it still works, but I think um, maybe it still works. But I think maybe there is a more precise way to to continue, and that more precise way to continue is actually with rook d3. Now, the most important thing about rook d3 is uh, what happens if queen takes c3. What happens if queen takes c3? And you take it back, it's a free queen. You never know. <laughs> do you have any ideas of what to do? Remember, checks, captures, and threats always. Let's see. Have to wait a little bit because I feel like the, it's a little bit delayed, the, ch the chat with the stream. I'm very proud of this game too because in general it was very nicely played. Maybe could have um, given my opponent less chances throughout the whole game. Oh, St. Louis Chess Club is saying Queen G5. Unfortunately, after Queen G5, um, after Queen G5, the Queen can go backwards. There's Queen G7, and we just lost the piece for no reason. However, the other move that was commented was better. Rook g3. Rook g3 is better. Now, if queen takes, we take with check, so they don't have time to make a background checkmate. And if king f8, queen h6, king e3, queen d6 is checkmate. So, um, black is losing after um, rook g3. Anyways. Uh, to finish it off, there is not much to do. My opponent maybe had a minute to try to figure things out, and he couldn't. He played king f8, because I don't think there is a way to figure things out. Like um, if, for example, queen h7, rook g3, king h8, queen f6, pretty nice. So um, he played king f8, 
And now the move that you all wanted to do, never play, never play, never play one move. What move we should never play it unless we have to play it. It's kind of like changing the move orders once again. All right, Oscar, Oscar is right. F six. Then there's nothing to do. In the game that he continued with queen uh, g6, queen h8, queen g8, queen h6, and here he resigned, because you know there's nothing. Um, <laughs> phrases indeed. Um, anyways, so in this position there is just nothing left to do. Queen g7, uh, queen takes g7, and it's checkmate. So very simple. Um, yeah, so that's how my last game finished. Both games were very aggressive towards the end. Uh, so I guess what we can learn from today was um, best defense is counterattack. Uh, don't take too long to castle, um, and try to find yeah, try to find the most active counterplay. Uh, keep in mind, you know, long diagonal bishops. Um, yeah, and this is, this is the payoff of doing tactics, it moves like c4 in the first game. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the little game I had planned today. Uh, do you want to close it up? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, thank you for coming and watching, keep watching all of the videos that um, the St. Louis Chess Club will be posting all the lectures and live streams. Um, look out for my live streams. <laughs> I live stream quite a bit, especially on um, Thursdays. Ladies play the people. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this game and motivated you to do more chess. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>